topic of this uh, next hour. Why do I like you? <laughs> if I do, I do like you. And now I will tell you a couple of things why I like Sean Patrick. Um, and I hope that you know by, by just two two numbers or two facts, you will you will have reason to like to love. To like you, like you. <laughs> so, I would like you to remember uh, two facts. Well, three. Number three. It's about countries, with which Sean is associated. Can anyone name me three countries with which Sean is associated? Ireland. 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 Wonderful. That's by origin. Italy. Very good. <laughs> That's by what? Yeah? <laughs> Sean calls that adoption. <laughs> and then one more? Ukraine. Ukraine. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's by life, love. <laughs> love. Okay, one more. One more. One more. Yes, that's you tell. True. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but then that's the fifth one. Okay, but so. Okay. Do you remember what we did at the Lviv uh, Media Forum? No, I wasn't there. At the Lviv Media Forum, I said, please put your finger on your nose. Can you touch your nose? Yeah. Touch your nose, don't be afraid. This is Lviv, huh? yeah. the, center, the center of the world. Huh? Now, now touch your big toe. Can you reach down and touch your big toe? Yes, touch your big toe. That, that is Cape Town. And that is as far as you can go. So from Cape Town via Ireland to Lviv. Yes, so that's the fourth, it looks like, yes. country, uh, which is uh, by birth, as Sean is saying. So that's one of the facts. Another fact that we have to remember five popes including the current one with whom Sean worked. So who remembers, well, current Pope? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Benedict, John Paul II, that was easy, okay. First, okay, yes. <laughs> we have some people in certain age. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, because I was sure that the younger generation won't re remember that. So let me uh, invite Sean, and we will spend another hour, you know, he will have some presentation and uh, some talk, and then we will, we will have time for questions, and I'm sure that it will be very interesting and uh, interactive, as always. Okay. Good. You don't like I, no, I don't like the mic. I still see many seats. Are you afraid of me? Do, do I look very intimidating? No, because you see, if you don't come to me, I'll come to I will come to you. So you cannot escape. Uh, come, come down. It's much. Let's make it a nice, uh, intimate encounter. I will even take my jacket off. Okay. Actually, I will take my tie off as well. Actually, no, I will stop. I knew you. That's good. <laughs> I was teaching a class in the United States, and I asked the students the same question. Can you name the five popes I have worked with? And of course, it's easy if you begin with Francis, and then Benedict, and then John Paul II, but they are students of your age, and so before John Paul II, it gets difficult, and so John Paul II, John Paul II, <laughs> and then one student said, St. Peter? <laughs> I said, I look so old. <laughs> no, let's begin. So this evening, I, I ask your forgiveness and your understanding, because... I really am a little bit confused. Now, I, I spend a lot of time being confused. If you worked in the Vatican with me, you would also be very confused. But this evening, I'm more confused than usual. Because 
I just looked at the, uh, the program for this conference of the last three days. And I'm very happy I only looked at it now. Because if I looked at it before, I would be hiding under my bed in terror. Because I saw such illustrious names on this program. And I know that for three days you have been entertained and instructed in some very erudite uh, topics. And, and I'm concerned that after listening to discussions on the role of social media in our socio-political 21st century digital context, which to come with a topic that says, do I like you? It sounds a bit of a letdown. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it really is at the basis of my confusion. You see, I'm a little bit confused at how is it possible that we're still talking about Facebook? I thought we had said everything that we could possibly say about Facebook. And, and I thought that Aristotle had said everything that there was to say about friendship. So why are we here to discuss Facebook and friendship when, when really it seems to me there's very little else to talk about? Um, of course, the answer to the question of why do I like you, I, you I, I do like you, otherwise I wouldn't be here and I would not continue coming back to Uku. But that's not why I'm confused. I'm confused because, can we talk honestly here? <laughs> I, we're, we're, not, we're not recording this conversation, right? Oh my goodness, oh sorry. Oh, I didn't see the camera. <laughs> Seriously. I'm confused because I really am not sure that in a few years' time, Facebook will exist. But certainly, if it does, it will not be in the shape and form and with the functions that we know it today. Certainly, when a young man called Mark Zuckerberg invented it in a Harvard dormitory back in 2004, its functions were very clear. And Facebook was associated with the concept of friendship, but it has precious little to do with friendship anymore. Now it's hardly more than a rather sophisticated, algorithm-driven marketing tool. You like what your friends are reading, wearing, drinking, doing, thinking, so someone somewhere can sell you one of them just like it. It's a super social supermarket, which is a pity, because the idea was a good one. And it still is a good one. And that's because we human beings, by nature, are curious. We are caring. We are daring. We are communicative creatures. We need connections. We look for connections. We need relationships. Because that's what friendships are, aren't they? Relationships. An interweaving web of emotional, social, intellectual bonds that mature and strengthen through commonly shared experiences. That's my definition, by the way, not, not Google. So if you want to use it, you have to put quotation marks and say, Sean says, <laughs> what friendship is an interweaving web of emotional, social, intellectual bonds that are strengthened through, through collective shared, shared experiences. It's the reason why some friendships grow and blossom into something else, which we call love. But that's another conversation, and we'll get there if we have time. Let's concentrate right now on not being confused, which brings us back to the topic, Facebook 
friendship in the time of Facebook. Now, as I was struggling on the plane from Rome to the Biff to think of something original and useful to say about this topic, I thought to myself, self, I thought, what would you have said if the topic was friendship in the time of Gutenberg and the printing press? What would you have said if it was friendship in the time of Tesla and wireless telegraphy? Would you have come to Uku and spoken about threats to privacy? Would you have issued stern warnings about credibility and control? Would I have raised issues about morality and the dangers of these platforms to distracting and destroying our young people? Would I have spoken about the potential of these modern means of communication to be used as, I dare say, tools of political propaganda? So while I was thinking about how interesting it is, how the technology changes, but our fears and concerns remain very much the same. While I was reflecting on this, I remembered a conversation I had some years ago with a cardinal in the Vatican. It was 1977, and Italian state television had just gone from broadcasting in black and white to color, 1977. And I remember the cardinal going the same color as his red robes, <laughs> as he lectured me and told me that television would destroy us all because it was the work of the devil. <laughs> now, that's, that's strange, because not even the popes have ever demonized technology. Pope Pius XI obviously did not think that radio was the work of the devil, when in 1929, he called the inventor of wireless telegraphy, a man called Guglielmo Marconi, to come and set up the world's first international broadcasting system, um, Vatican Radio, Radio Vatican. And Pope Francis obviously does not think that technology is the devil's work, because this very week, he addressed a conference in Rome on artificial intelligence. And in his speech at the end of the conference, he said that technology is a human characteristic. It's part of who we are. It's part of who, what we do. It's an extension of ourselves. I, I work for him, and, and since this is being recorded, <laughs> I better give you a complete version. So he, he also said <laughs> that the difference between technology and humanity is something called conscience. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Pope Francis does not possess a cell phone. Pope Francis does not use a computer but he is the second most followed world leader on Twitter. No, don't ask me who the first one is. It was the man with the orange hair. <laughs> Never mind. Pope Francis understands, and the popes have always understood, the importance of technology. In the Vatican, Francis has had several heart-to-heart, one-on-one, conversations with Mark Zuckerberg, you probably saw the pictures on, on Twitter, um, with the CEOs of Google and WhatsApp and, and Apple and many others besides. So I don't think the Pope or any, any of us is under any illusions with regard to the limitations in terms of the way social media or Facebook mediates 
and modifies the way we relate to each other, I think we appreciate the advantages that it has of being such a convenient and powerful tool for sharing content quickly and effectively. And so you ask, why is he confused? It's not so much about Facebook or social media at all that makes me confused. Maybe I'm confused because I don't like the way we have started relating to one another as human beings. Because from what I see, it seems to me we risk getting even more confused about what it means to be a human being. Okay, now you're confused, I know. All right, so maybe you need pictures, huh? Need some pictures? Yeah. All right, let's have some pictures. Oh. <laughs> How do I get it to full screen? Where's the icon? Full screen? No. I can't see this one. So, thank you so much. This year, did you know, this year marks the 10th birthday of the like option. Yes, 2009, the like option was introduced because Facebook understood that we humans are interactive creatures. We want to express our opinion. We want to have our say, and we always have. We've been having our say with the thumbs up sign ever since the days. Oh, okay, yes. And which way? Yes. Ever since the days of the Colosseum. Vivat meant you lived, thumbs down meant you died in a very quick and painful way. The Romans didn't even actually just introduce the gesture. The Romans introduced the whole concept of like, and they used that concept to express it the more complex notion of friendship. Okay, try following this. Who are the Latinists in the room? Who are the Latinists? Latin students? Latin? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> nam atque velle, nam nolle ea, Demum firma amicitia est. That's Latin. And it's a quote by the Roman historian and politician Salustius from around 34 BC. What he's saying is that strong friendship is defined by liking and disliking the same things. Idem velle. Idem nolle. We are friends because we like the same things, we dislike the same things. Translated into 21st century language, idem velle, idem nolle could mean something like, I like you because you like me, and you like me because I am like you, and I am like you because I like what you like. And I don't like what you don't like. Okay, repeat after me. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. Let's, let's do this. Okay, what am I doing wrong? That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, there you go. Huh? Okay, all together. Yes, all together. I like you because you like me. And you like me because I am like you. And I am like you because I like what you like and I don't like what you don't like. Very good. Bravi. Well done. And that, my friends, is why we're friends. Or are we? Can it possibly be as simple as that? Would we be having a conference if it were really as simple as that? Three years ago, Facebook decided that friendship is much more complicated than that. 
It takes more than a like to express my feelings towards you. It takes six reactions. And it, three years ago, Facebook introduced the th six reactions, which are like, love, laugh, wow, and anger. Actually, the truth is, we're at ooh. You want to hear the truth? The truth is that their advisors, their sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, advisors of Facebook, the people who earn a million dollars a minute, advise them that in order to adequately express something of the diversity and the nuance of human reactions, you would need at least 25. <laughs> but Facebook said, and I quote, that the emojis were more about, listen to, helping the algorithms identify what users most want to see. And so six were more than enough, thank you. What no one, not even the algorithms, could predict was that the most popular emoji would be, and still is, love. So it appears that more than loving to like, we like to love. <laughs> Which kind of broadens the question, I told you we'd get there eventually to talk about love, right? <laughs> Which kind of broadens the whole question of friendship. It's in our unique capacity to love that we best express what it means to be human. Okay, put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart, even if you're over 45. <laughs> put your hand on your heart. And try to remember the last time you were in love. Hopefully you still are. Hopefully you still are. And ask yourself, self, how do you know that it's love? Okay, you want to hear a definition? This is also my definition. It's not from Google. Um, okay, you have to understand. So my name is Sean Patrick because my parents are Irish and they wanted to make sure that you knew that I was Irish. <laughs> but my surname is Lovett. L-O-V-E-T-T. -T. Now, I went to an all-boys boarding school. Have you any idea what it was like to have a surname like Love It in an all boys boarding school. <laughs> Every day of my life. So what do you love? So how do you love? So who do you love? Trust me, I had a long time to think about what love means. <laughs> and I think love is, love is the feeling that you feel when you feel you feel a feeling that you never felt before. <laughs> Ask yourself. Love, love is that, it's that tingling in your tummy. It has nothing to do with little red hearts and that. It's the tingling in your tummy that won't let you eat and that won't let you sleep. And it hurts. The Chinese, who studies Chinese? No Latin, no Chinese. What do you say? <laughs> Chinese ideogram for love contains a dagger. And the Chinese word for love, I, already sounds painful, doesn't it? I. Love hurts. Every romantic song that's ever been written tells us that love hurts. It hurts so much that the ancient Greeks who were uh, a lot more sophisticated and uh, less superficial than the ancient Romans, tried to make sense out of it by selecting numerous words. Not just one word for love. Eros. Eros, the god of love. Eros, which is the love of passion. Can, can we use, can we talk about sex? No, I never know. Are we allowed to talk about sex? <laughs> <laughs> we can hiss? Okay, so um, sex, 
if, if there's anyone who doesn't know what sex is, um, <laughs> Sofia Patska will explain afterwards. <laughs> She has flashcards in her own <laughs> Eros, Eros is the power, the sexual power of love. It's, it's, about, it's about survival. Huh? It's the love of survival. Philia. Philia is the love between friends. It's the word, it's the word that comes closest to Aristotle's idea of love as friendship that's born out of need or out of pleasure or out of the search for virtue and that which is good. <coughs> Storge is family love. It's nourishing love, nurturing <coughs> love. It's the love that parents feel for their children and that children Anna, sometimes feel for their parents. <laughs> that is Storge. <laughs> The Romans, of course, always had have something to say, so they threw in ludus. Ludus is the Latin word for fun, and, and that's the fun love that the teenagers do. It's that rolling in the park kind of love. It's that teasing love. It's that two hours on the phone kind of love. It's that, you know, so what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's that right. That's right. That's right. Ah, then there's mania. Mania is obsessive, compulsive love. It's the stalker's love. We won't say with mania, pragma. If you're over 45, then you understand what pragma is. Pragma is the love that comes when you've done it all. The eros is over. The phoenix is over. The ludus, forget about it. It's all about pragma. Let's just make the damn thing work. Philautia. Philautia is, is the self-love that often we confuse with narcissism, but it's much more complex than that because the Greeks, the Greeks were complex people. The philautia is, it's the self-knowledge, the love that comes with, I know my limitations. As a Christian, there are beautiful echoes of philautia in the greatest commandment, the greatest commandment that we hear in Matthew and in Mark, where they ask Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And he says, love! And then he categorizes what kind of love. Do you remember? You love God with all your heart. I love the order. I love the order in which he puts it. Huh? How do you love God? With all your heart, with your emotion. Then when you start feeling this love, you love with your mind. You try to understand the love. And then Mark adds the word strength. With your will, you must want to love. And then, of course, the part that everyone forgets. And, your, and the second commandment, he says, is like the first. Same level. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so, if I can't love myself, how can I love my neighbor? And if I can't love my neighbor, how can I say I love God? Get out here. The Greeks knew all about it. Agape is our love for God and God's love for us. And that's the... That's the... What we call caritas huh, in Latin. Uh, Benedict XVI. We have a fan of Benedict XVI in the front row here. <laughs> Benedict XVI wrote a beautiful encyclical letter called Deus Caritas Est. God is not charity. God is love, but God is this, this self-giving love. Unconditional <coughs> love. Unconditional <coughs> love. Can we talk here? We're among friends. Yes? Or will you report me to the Vatican if I tell you something? <laughs> Yes? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, well, then we don't. Yeah, do. no, no, no. Are you curious? Do you care? Are you curious? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. So, John Paul I. Who remembered John? You remember John Paul I. 
John Paul I got into big trouble. He was pope for only 33 days, which is why most people forget. They, most people forget about him 33 days. In those 33 days, twice, John Paul I spoke <laughs> about God as our mother. Yes. And it's very, oh, it's, yes. It's difficult to find those speeches because the idea of the Pope saying God is a, more our mother than our father, it was a scandal. This was 1978. Why would he say that? What did he mean? <laughs> one of the theories. One of the, I believe he said that because he was trying to give us an example of how God really is unconditional love. I'm a daddy, I'm a father, I have two sons. Uh, they're very handsome, much better than I am. They're very good looking. <laughs> One is a lawyer. <laughs> as a daddy, uh, our role as a daddy often is to be the person who is giving the discipline and making the rules. Uh, and, and that's why children will often go to mummy first. Because they know, but mummy said I can. <laughs> There's the, the unconditional love. That is, that is agape, unconditional love. Now you can choose any one of those that you feel you can identify best with. Or you can do something better. You can mix and match them. You can mix them up. Because as we grow, as we mature, as we evolve, we experience, if we're lucky, a little bit of each one of those kinds of love. They're not simple, superficial sentiments. They're states of being. These descriptions of love that can be applied to friendship tell us about ourselves, about other people, and about how we relate to one another, because they challenge us to change. And change is part of being human. Feelings change. Likes change. So if there's anything to criticize about Facebook and friendship in the time of Facebook, I think it's this compulsive, endless scrolling through our screens that leaves us dazed and passive, and apathetic, and bored. Click here, click there, like, love, laugh, wow! <laughs> Challenge has come to mean collecting enough likes to make yourself like yourself. Change means buying a new smartphone that has four cameras instead of only three. <laughs> And it's not Facebook's fault. It's our own. Facebook isn't the cause of our apathy and our boredom. Facebook is only the symptom. Which is why more and more of us are becoming bored with Facebook. Including the teenage students I teach at a high school in Rome, where I run a theater workshop for the last 35 years I run this theater workshop with teenage students at a high school in Rome. And so, as I was um, researching this presentation for you this evening, I thought I would take advantage this week, and I would ask them what they felt about friendship and Facebook. Are you curious to hear what they said? Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you care? Yeah. Yeah. And I will share it with you. So, Giovanni. It was when my grandmother began to share pictures of me as a baby <laughs> in the bath that I left Facebook. <laughs> Beatrice, Beatrice, when my mother started trying to friend my friends, I decided it was time to go. <laughs> Oh, 
Rocco. I'm still on Facebook, but I just use it as a birthday reminder. <laughs> so I said, well, if you're going away from Facebook, where, where are you going? What are you using? Matteo. Mostly Instagram. Although, Matteo says, if you are really my friend, you probably have my phone number. And so WhatsApp lets me do everything I need to do. <laughs> so we were sitting around on the floor in a circle, and the conversation was really, really exciting. There are lots more, but I thought three was enough. And so I thought, let's hear what they think about friendship. Now, this afternoon we heard some extraordinary definitions of friendship. I'm still not sure how many friends you have, huh? based on your criteria. <laughs> on those, I don't think I would have one friend based on your, on your criteria. So this is utterly, please, this is not scientific. Do not take notes. Do not quote me. Um, but you won't find this on Google. This is what they said. Friendship, said Giacomo, <clears throat> is what is supposed to challenge and change you. This kid's 15. Mm -hmm. Friendship is supposed to challenge you and change you. Too bad most people are too busy collecting likes and posting selfies. Angela, a friend, she says, always tells you the truth. A friend is someone you can trust. You sound familiar. It's, huh? it's not Aristotle. No? A friend knows what you're feeling without you having to tell them. A friend is someone you miss when they're not there. I think that's the kind of friend I would like to have. And it's certainly the kind of friend that I would like to be. Thank you so much. <laughs>
reading. Old Testament, we have three. Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, and, and the Gospel reading. And I so I, I opened my own, what does it say? Vatican News. News. Yes, because it's my, my page. Huh? <laughs> I opened my, my Vatican News page and, and thought, well, let's just see what the reading what the reading for today is. Are you ready? This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the reading I opened this morning in my room, room number 535 on the fifth floor. You can check at the Collegium. This is what it says. Let your acquaintances be many, but one in a thousand your friend. When you gain a friend, first test them and be not too ready to trust them. For one sort is a friend when it suits them, but they will not be with you in times of distress. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. <coughs> a faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. A faithful friend is a life saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend will be like him. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. You don't have to, uh, it's late, you're tired, it's okay, you can all go. It's all, I don't mind, I'm not, I will not be offended, I will still love you. <laughs> I, can, I can say with that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so I wanted to ask what was uh, on that What's conference about sex abuse. What's your name? Oksana. Hello, Oksana. Hello, uh, Oksana. <laughs> I know. So, what was on that conference about sex abuse? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a journalism, journalism student, Oksana? Uh, I'm a philologist. Okay. Actually. I'm meeting with the journalist students tomorrow on the second floor at half past nine. And I will address that issue because from a journalistic point of view, it is important. And I think the journalism students need to know. So if you want me to answer that question, I will see you tomorrow at half past nine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? So if we don't talk about sex, we don't talk about anything? <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you, uh, what do you think was the role of friendship among thousands of bishops that had not known each other before in Vatican II. Second Vatican Council, yeah. I mean, thousands of people who yes. know each other before, before. they've been friends. Mm. I, they were focusing on common issues. My, my <laughs> definition of friendship, huh? As do you remember, I said it's an interweaving web, because it's complex, of emotional, social, and intellectual bonds that are strengthened and that mature through commonly shared experience. They were sharing a common experience. They were focusing on issues of common concern. They were coming together. So there was, there was an emotional connection. There was a social connection. There certainly was an intellectual connection, which I think favored that kind of, that kind of friendship. Uh, which one of the Greek words would you give to that kind of friendship? All of them. Ah? <laughs> not, not Eros. <laughs> I'm sure there was some Eros going on. Oh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Sorry, it's your job. <laughs> 
Я вже так. The question. Hello, Oksana. Hello. Thank you very much for. Um, what is the most popular? Uh, um, I love your presentation. It was about science. And now the question, because we do select who we love, what we like, what we prefer to hear, and we avoid many things and people we don't really want to be in our ecosystem. True. We were talking a lot about bubbles. Yes. And usually we, we talk about bubbles as a very negative thing. Mm. Do you think it is a negative thing in our life? Mm. And can we use bubbles in a good meaning, for a good purpose? Mm. What it means in our life? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. I think we have a right to protect ourselves. Mm. And we have a right to self-preservation. Uh, not just not just physically, but also emotionally. Uh, you and I, we have a right not to share everything with everybody. There are things that it's best that you don't know about me. Huh? You may not like me so much if you knew these things about me. So, so the bubble does help help protect us. But at the same time, it depends rather what material the bubble is made of. Mm. If the bubble is made of stainless steel, and it is so rigid and so hard that you are locked inside your bubble, and you cannot get out, and you cannot see out, and no one can see in, then I'm not sure it's an effective bubble. If your bubble is made of a softer material that allows you to get up and get out, I think that is essential. Mm -hmm. I think part of our problem, part of our challenge is, and, and, and you see it, you know it, huh? mm -hmm. is, is, is this. Uh, and as long as we're looking down, it's, okay, so if you want to know what the weather will be like tomorrow, what will you do? What will you do to find out what the weather is like tomorrow? Open the weather app. I will open my weather app, exactly, and I will look down and it will tell me, my grandmother, her name was Lillian. Irish grandmother, she could not read and she could not write. But Grandma Lillian, people were talking about their mothers today, I'm talking about my grandmother. Yeah. Grandma Lillian, if you said, Grandma, what's the weather going to? She would look at the sky and she would tell you within an hour of what it was going to Oh, to be sure, to be sure. You'll be wanting to take your umbrella today. And you'd say, but Grandma Lily, there's not a cloud in the sky. And she would say, ah, to be sure, to be sure. Before the sun goes down, I'm telling you. And you took your umbrella. Because to be sure, to be sure, before the sun went down, the rain came down. So when, when did we lose that? What, what happened to us? that we lost that capacity to look up and to look out and to see and to understand the world around us. That, I have a second question. No, oh, only one, one, one question. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I didn't have enough of so, in the house. Oksana, journalists are always afraid of the follow-up question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can keep it. Well, yeah, so sure. you had one. Yeah? You had a question. Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so, first of all, thank you for the impressive uh, talk. So, your name? My name is Yevgeny. 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 Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, me too. Uh, okay. So, my question is uh, about uh, social networks, fa Facebook, Instagram, so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, just to conclude, uh, how do you think? Is it a good event for global friendship, or not, in fact, social networks, I mean. Okay, okay, why, why do we have to divide everything into good or bad? No. Mm -hmm. huh? Because it's uh, simple did you, did to you say not why. see the movie, what is it, Forty Shades of Grey or something? <laughs> 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 it's, 
I, I think we, we've gone past the stage of where we we're defining uh, as, as good as good. There are good there are good aspects. Uh, they're, they're, they're extremely useful for some things, um, not extremely useful for others. As journal, are there any journalist students here? Mm-hmm. Well, you are. Are you going to come back again tomorrow? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> okay, first, first week of journalism, uh, certainly in an English-speaking university or college, the first week they tell you the five questions to ask, which in English is easy because they all begin oh, with the w. w, the five Ws, mm-hmm. and they are? Who, what, 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 where, where, when. Very good. Who, what, when, where, and why. It seems to me that the technology, the social media, the Google searches, they can all give us answers to four of the five Ws. They can tell us who, when, where, what, but they can never tell us why. And that's what makes us human, is our desire, our curiosity to know what. My dog doesn't want to know why. He wants to know what he's having for dinner, when I'm serving it up, who is going to bring it to him. But he doesn't care why. The why is what makes us human. And so it's very useful for who, what, when, where. Who's coming to the party tonight? Where are we going to meet? What time? But why do I have to go to the party tonight? Yes. Is that a suitable answer? No. Kind of. Okay. Oh. We, have lo- we have time for last question. And this My name is Andre. Hi, Thank Andre. Thank you for the presentation. Good to meet you. And my question is about pretending. You know, our digital yes. age, yes. modern era, is full of this pretending being uh, nice, yes. pretending being helpful, pretending... Um, being friends also. Yes. And all this is in some opportunistic way, you know. You, you have a friend uh, until the time you are in need. Um, you help this friend and, and then you're just disappointed. Mm-hmm. How can we read of, or in some way limit this in our uh, sphere, in our social, um, uh, social yes. way and, and all of this problem? The reading I read to you earlier is from the Old Testament book of wisdom. I, it is chapter 5. I suggest you go and you read chapter 5 of the book of wisdom. It has many answers for you to that question, and it answers them much better than I ever could. Okay, so... I suggest that tomorrow, I know the students have some questions, but you will have a meeting tomorrow. Just so you, us, huh? Yes. Yeah, so you can <laughs> ask all the questions. You can yeah. create another 10 <laughs> questions uh, tonight, you know. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's always a pleasure to have you, Sean Patrick, here in, uh, at the pool. It's always a pleasure to have you share with students. And thank you very much. Thank you for friendship. Um, and thank you for true friendship, because I think we can can feel it, you know, this is like, as you mentioned, this is when you feel it, and I'm sure that lots of us at Pupu know you for some time, and we really feel it, so thank you very much, and thank you, and I hope you, you...